Robots are known for being sturdy, clanky, and robust, kind of like a bull in a china shop. But scientists are developing softer systems, made from fabrics, rubbers, and other pliable materials. Robots that are squishing and flopping their way into the future. Take robotic textiles, soft materials with powers far beyond those of anything in your closet. Researchers are hoping robotic textiles can be used in wearable technologies that can, say, enhance the strength of users or support people with mobility issues. The possibilities are endless, from shape-changing smart clothes to NASA's next-generation spacesuit designs. It might take softer robots to make life, well, a little less hard. I grew up loving anime, which I think a lot of people do nowadays. So I remember watching like Sailor Moon and I probably tell this story a lot, but I just loved how like one thing it's great because you have these women that are in charge. They are going to save the day. And two, they wore awesome outfits. They went through these transformations and then they have a whole new garment on and then they're going to fight crime, save the day, be awesome. So I think that was something that's always planted a seed for me. Can clothing transform? Does it have to be static? Vanessa Sanchez is an engineer working with the Harvard Microrobotics Laboratory in the Wies Institute. She designs and develops robotic textile projects. Can you tell me what robotic fabrics are? For me, robotic fabrics are any kind of textile or fabric that has both a sensing component as well as an actuation component. And sensors are things where we can gain information from the environment or the wear or even the textile or fabric itself, know what state it's in, where actuators are movers. So these are things where we're transforming one type of energy to motion. So I do a lot of pneumatic actuation right now, which is like inflating a balloon. We're taking a high pressure source and we're getting that to transform into a bending motion. These days, most of these experimental pneumatic systems still need to be connected to tubes and external compressors that regulate pressure. To ditch the bulky gear, Vanessa and her team are developing thermally actuating textiles. Chemicals sealed inside the textiles vaporize or liquefy, depending on the temperature, causing the material to inflate or deflate. Other types of robotic textile sensors measure things like strain or stretching to know the wearer's position or movements. And while yes, admittedly, we are a long way from Sailor Moon level transformation here, for now, Vanessa and other researchers have more vital goals in sight. Some of the use cases are assistive garments that can help those that have mobility disabilities um, be able to live a more comfortable life. Just these little things that affect people as they go throughout their day that can actually be major snags. Picture a shirt that could massage a sore back muscle or use precise pressure to stimulate blood flow or even a textile exosuit or glove that could aid movement of your hands or legs. In the pursuit of more accessible design, Vanessa collaborates with Open Style Lab, a nonprofit organization spun out of MIT. Chief Brand Officer Christina Mallon says she first got involved when she needed a coat that she could put on without the use of her arms. When we talk about like wearable sensors, robotics, I think that's going to have a huge impact in people's life. It's about 20% of Americans have a disability and a nice portion of them have uh, mobility challenges. You know, I became disabled probably 11 years ago due to motor neuron disease, and it has slowly happened over time. And the two biggest issues I had with being disabled, one was the how people were represented with disabilities in the media. And the second was not being able to do whatever I wanted because the world was not designed with me in mind. At Open Style Lab, projects using tech like soft robotic textiles are developed under the leadership of those with personal disability-related experience. Well, tell me a little bit about soft robotics and why you're excited about this tech. Like, what's the potential here? And the potential is that I'll be able to hold, you know, my child in the future when I have a child. I use robotics in my everyday life and it's been super helpful um, for me to regain the independence in certain things that I would like to do. But to be able to hug someone, hug, you know, my family members, to be able to do some of my personal care things by myself, that would be uh, such a joy. Christina hopes sleek soft designs can one day help people shed stigmas around some of today's mobility devices. 
But even with optimism for the way science can improve lives, there are important caveats when looking to the future. Like not losing sight of the many ways we could design things, such as public spaces and transportation, to better serve people with disabilities right now. And of course, any amazing new soft robotic tech would actually have to be affordable for those who want it. Things come out, but no one can afford them. So they get a lot of praise in the media, but they're so, so expensive and out of reach for so many people with disabilities. I think it's all about giving people the decision to be able to move again or not. And I think that is what I wish soft robotics will allow for. From early on, soft robotics has been intertwined with assistive tech. The McKibben artificial muscle, an early example of soft robotics, was invented in the 1950s by Joseph Laws McKibben, an American physicist and engineer who'd worked on atomic bomb testing during World War II. His daughter, writer Karen McKibben, had polio as a child, leaving her without the use of her hands, as seen in this 1959 March of Dimes footage. Joseph created the pneumatic system to help her grip and manipulate objects. But designing for disability usually has far wider implications. His basic concept is still used today. It's a keystone design in the field of soft robotics, which has exploded over the last decade. There are a lot of areas where softness is actually a strength. Even outside wearables, soft robots can in theory be folded or deflated to take up less room than traditional robotic components. And engineers hope soft robots can reduce injuries in factories and other workplaces where people and robots regularly interact. Some soft robot parts are already in wide use. Soft Robotics Inc., a Massachusetts firm, creates grippers and other tech for handling delicate foods, like Peep's marshmallow candy. Researchers are also developing completely soft robots, which can take on new, never-before-seen applications that simply wouldn't be possible with traditional robots. Along with spacesuits, NASA is developing soft robots that can theoretically assemble into shelters, crafts, and probes. And the Hawks Lab at the University of California, Santa Barbara, is developing vine robots, called that because like vines, they extend from the tip, without relying on surface friction to move. These robots can extend through tiny cramped spaces and could one day aid in search and rescue missions. Some of these models use robotic textiles, like those Vanessa specializes in, to steer. There's a lot of different fields that have to come together. Some in textile engineering, some in electronics, some in polymer science, robotics. Like, there's a lot of different threads that we're drawing through to weave everything together. Remember, making these complete soft robotic systems involves rethinking a lot of basic stuff, like figuring out how to soften up traditionally rigid elements, such as batteries, or just get rid of them entirely, which is no easy feat. And proving they're just like the rest of us, these scientists and engineers apparently have a bit of a laundry problem to deal with. Some of the key challenges are things like washability and care. Like if I'm going to wash the sensor, you know, as many times as I wash my favorite pair of jeans, is it going to hold up? Um, if it's coated in metal, is this going to flake off? Um, can this last what we expect of our clothing? Vanessa imagines a future where in a couple of decades, these kinds of robotics could be integrated into our chairs and beds. And as for transforming clothing, she speculates that one day we could have plain base garments and be able to change their shape and style by downloading different designs. So you're like, oh, I'm wearing this already. Um, I'm going from work to out to the club or something. I want to have a different style kind of programmed into my dress and then the textile itself is like changing shape to accommodate that. So could you have your garment, your base garment, and be like, oh, I'm gonna download sweetest massage today. Or maybe instead you wanna download resistance training and your garment's actually making it harder for you to run. In the long run, it's not clear where robotic textiles or soft robots in general will take us. Could be Sailor Moon, could be the actual moon. But maybe most importantly, they carry the promise of making life more fluid for anyone, regardless of ability. You can make soft robotics beautiful and you'll be able to do that while creating something that is better for the body because why aren't clothes better for your body? They should be. Mm -hmm.